Hi, my name's James Ryan, and today I'm going to record a video that shows you how to remove the built-in Universal Windows platform apps from Windows 10 and any other bloatware that you might find on your Windows 10 machine. Obviously, before I get started, if you're a regular viewer of my channel, you may know I've already got a video on this channel saying how to remove UWP apps from Windows 10. That was recorded for Windows 10 version 8.03. Got a number of reasons for re-recording it. I've tidied the branding up a little bit on my channel, had some complaints that the previous video was a bit too long, and also I wanted to update it just for the 2004 version of Windows 10, which we're currently at now. So that's why we're doing a new video on this. So anyway, without further ado, how do we remove those Universal Windows Platform apps from Windows 10? I have a full vanilla Windows 10 build here that's fully patched. And if you're familiar with Universal Windows Platform apps, they're kind of these new, um, what they refer to as MSIX or modern apps, they have a number of different names. And you can see them all on the start menu down here. Uh, they haven't really caught on, to be perfectly honest, and I think Microsoft have kind of realizing this and scaling them back a little bit. They do still appear a lot of in Windows 10, and probably, apart from the calculator, I wouldn't imagine that particularly a lot of them are really widely used by many Windows 10 users out there. However, if you do have some that you find that you use, bear in mind what we're going to show you in this um, in this tutorial here. You may want to tailor that a bit to make sure you don't remove something you inadvertently want to keep. Anyway, so you've got a Windows 10 machine here. Now the idea is there's two ways you can remove the apps. You can remove the apps for the current user who's logged in, and you can also remove the apps from the machine itself so that any other users who might log on and use this machine don't get these apps at all. Now there's several ways you can remove them. You can click on the Start menu and pick one of the modern apps and right click on the Start menu like, this, like I've done here. And there is actually an uninstall function there for some of those apps, so they can be uninstalled directly from the start menu if you want to go through one by one and do it like that that's absolutely fine what you can also do is you can click on settings down here as well go into the apps section of settings and then you'll see a list of all the apps on your machine including the modern apps the uwp apps and again you can click on those and click on uninstall some of them can't be removed, as you'll see, the uninstall is greyed out there. Those are apps that are generally tied to the system and can't be removed. But again, if you want to do it individually, you can go through this way and remove them one by one. Now, this will remove the apps just for that one user who's logged in. It takes quite a while, but it'll remove them just for the, in this user's context. So if another user logged on the machine, you'd have to get them to repeat that process. So there is a quicker way you can do it, and you can do that by using PowerShell. So if you right click on the start menu and choose Windows PowerShell Admin, obviously you need to be an administrator to make these sorts of changes. And then click on yes on there. If you want to remove all the apps for the current user session, you can use a command get dash app x package minus all users. And then if you pipe this in, so use the pipe command like that, and type out dash grid view minus pass through and then pipe that again to remove dash app x package so that's the command that you need to type in and press return now what this will do is it's a nifty little trick from powershell it'll actually pipe through all of the applications that are available in the current user's context. And the ones that you select in this window and then click on OK will be the ones that are passed to the remove command. Now, as I mentioned earlier, there may be some apps you want to keep. So if you're doing it this way, I'd recommend going through and having a good look at all of these apps. There are things in there like Bing, Weather, Xbox apps, the, the UWP version of OneNote, Sticky Notes, things like that, that you can probably get rid of. However, things like .NET Framework and things like that, that you probably can't get rid of. And there are things like the Windows Calculator that you actually might find you possibly need. But if you're in a gung-ho mood and you want to get rid of as many as possible, what I do is press Control and A to highlight them all, then hold down Control and click on Windows Calculator, because I know that's usually the only one that I want to keep. 
and then just go ahead and click on OK and it will try to remove every single one of those apps. Now as you can see the ones that are tied to the system are flashing up red with errors saying that they can't be removed but eventually it will go through and remove as many as it possibly can with the obvious exception of the calculator app because you know removing the calculator is not really a great thing when you find you possibly need it later on. So if you just let that run through now, I think there's about 70 of them it'll go through before it finishes uninstalling all of the apps that it possibly can. Now obviously what you have to bear in mind is that this is all being done in the context of the current user. So this will only remove the apps for the user that's currently logged in. So we should be getting towards the end now. It's done 80 plus activities now you can see that feedback is coming up in the window there and it's completed with a huge amount of errors but in the context of the current user it should have removed as many applications as possible except for the calculator so if we have a look on the start menu you can see straight away that practically everything has disappeared from there apart from our old friend the calculator which is at the top there. So right away, we've really cut down the amount of applications that are installed on this machine, and we can now install the applications that we want on there. Now, one more thing to notice is, if you've got maybe a laptop or a desktop that's come with some software pre-installed, this one's a, a completely vanilla image, so it hasn't. You may find if you go into settings and into apps, you may have lots of things listed in here. We've only got one thing that's come pre-installed because it's, as I said, it's a completely vanilla build that we've created, and that's OneDrive. But if there's anything extra in here, you know, maybe apps from the manufacturer or things like that, that you feel you don't need, you can simply click on them like I've clicked on OneDrive here, and just click on uninstall, and then uninstall again, and it will remove them from that machine. So you can also cut down further. Once you've got rid of the UWP apps, you can go in and uninstall anything else that you've found on the machine that might be bloatware or something that you don't need. So that's another way of trimming down how many of the apps that are installed on the machine. So you can see OneDrive's been removed. And that's that done for that one user. So if you're just logged on as a single user using your new device, then that's all you would need to do and you can start installing your apps and customizing your environment. However, if you share your Windows 10 machine with other users who may log on, or if you work in an enterprise environment and you want to create a base image, you can also use PowerShell to remove the apps, the UWP apps, from the machine itself. And you simply just slightly modify the command that we used before. This time we use get app x provisioned package as the PowerShell commandlet and you type in a switch of minus online and then if we pipe that through to the grid view command again if you don't want to type in out dash grid view you can use the alias which is ogv and the alias for the minus pass through command is uh, minus pass through switch is simply minus p and then you type in remove dash app x provisioned assume that is spell it package into there and again put the minus online switch on the end so there you go once you've got that command in this time we're going to remove them in the context of the machine rather than the user we're removing the provisioned packages which are given to new users so once again as i said if you want to be really really gung-ho about it what you can do is select all of them with the obvious exception of the calculator if you can spot it on there there it is microsoft.windows calculator and then click on OK on there and watch as it starts the removal process again. Now, as I said, we've already removed the apps from our user session that we're logged on as. This is merely doing it so that if a new user logs onto the machine, they won't get the apps provision to them. Or if you're creating a gold image from this Windows 10 image that you've got there, you will now have a gold image that is free from all of those provisioned apps. So let's just let that bit complete. As you probably noticed, there wasn't quite as many apps in that list. There wasn't 80 plus like there was with the, the user packages. So let's just let that run through and complete. So when you get the, the, the control return, you in the PowerShell window, you know that it's finished. So it's run through and done all of those installations there that we can see in the window there. So now, 
Okay, exit from PowerShell that. What we should be able to do is we should be able to simply sign out of this user session and log in as a different user. So what I need to do is try and get another user to log on. So I just press Control Alt Delete. And find that my password's changed. Fantastic. Password's expired rather. Just do that as well. There you go. So I switch back into full screen mode. And now this user's logging on for the first time because you can see it's popping up the welcome screen that you would normally see from Windows 10. But when we get in, we should say that it hasn't taken as long as normal as you normally expect and that the user hasn't got all of those apps provisioned into their profile that we saw in the user who was logged on before. So let's just see what we can see on there. Let's let it finish logging on. And there you go. You see, we've got practically nothing in there apart from Calculator, Edge, and the Settings app, and OneDrive, and nothing else in there as well. It's all sat there ready for the user to customize to their heart's content. So that's how you would get rid of them for all users as well. Now what you would normally do at this stage, if you were in an enterprise environment, would be to save that image now so that when you deploy it out to your new users, you've got an image with the universal Windows platform apps and all the other bloatware removed and obviously probably a lot of other applications added in there. If you're just a single user you can then start adding in the apps that you want to use on that machine. Well that's how you get rid of all those universal Windows platform apps on the Windows 10 2004 version.